Hey everybody, I thought I'd do a quick video on repairing the Actron 7830 hand vacuum pump which comes in the uh, 7835 uh, brake bleeding kit. Uh, this is going to be quick. I didn't see anything else uh, on YouTube that, that covered how to do this and I'm in the middle of it and there's a few lessons learned I thought I'd pass along. So first of all, if your pump's not working, it won't hold vacuum, which is what happened uh, with mine after having it for many years. You can order a rebuild kit, which currently uh, costs about $8 from Actron. And here's your part number right here, 1000-000-1626. So you can call Actron and they'll send you this kit. Uh, what comes in the kit are these components. You get two Schrader type check valves and you'll notice first hint one of them has a very strong spring on it. One of them has a very weak spring on it. The one with the weak spring is, goes inside the unit and I'll show you that in a minute. It uh, has a piston end seal, we'll call it, an o-ring, a piston seal, and a little tool for changing the uh, Schrader valves if you don't happen to have one of these uh, on hand. So that's what comes in the in the kit. The unit itself is a, a bit tough to get apart. It's made in three pieces. It, that's explained in a footnote of the repair part section of the manual and I'm halfway into this one. I'll have to apologize so I can't show you everything I've done uh, up to now but I can give you the general gist. Uh, the barrel comes off the two end pieces and uh, after all this time it's made of brass so they don't totally seize but they can get quite tight as mine is. I'm in the middle of separating the barrel from the back piece. So let me show you that, what I've got here. Uh, I found the only reason, only way to get this thing going was to put a set of vice grips on it with uh, some cushion here. And yeah, you are going to squash this barrel a little bit trying to do this. So, uh, you know, that's the way it goes to break it loose. Uh, the back end is a real pain because this black bracket here is slightly larger than the barrel so and you have to grip that tiny little place there. I just used some uh, vice grip type pliers with serrated edges and cranked down on it till it, it finally gripped enough to break it free. So I do have it free now and you can take the vice grips off of it. Hopefully it will spring back to where I can use it and I can unscrew the, the barrel. You've got to take this back piece off and I'll show you why. Let me get the vice grips off of this thing, set them aside. So here's how the thing um, goes together. You've got a piston and a spring inside this back barrel here. That's going to go, and it's a little hard to hold this, uh, hold this thing with this spring on it. But anyway, that's going to go through the handle like that. And then you're going to have this piece here. And then you're going to have a little snap ring deal that holds it all together. Now, you can get that snap ring off. As you can see, I've done it here. I wondered if I could get it off without damage. And I did by just very carefully prying it little by little with a screwdriver. So that does have to come off. Um, here's the front section of the barrel which I had already taken off using the, the a similar method. What I did with that one is I took the barrel, held it in my vice grips. This was on here like that and I just put a big crescent wrench across here. Well, maybe I can show you that. Let's put it back on here a little bit temporarily. I held it like that with my vice grips, put the big crescent wrench on there, gave her a crank and it did finally pop loose. Um, I 
tried a couple of different types of pad. This is an old, you know, like a camping type, you know, foam pad. Uh, it fairly rigorous grip, and that was enough to hold this barrel. But um, you know, you're either going to have to do something like that, or or put up with some marks on this barrel, you know, to get that thing to pop three free. But anyway, this is the front part. It unscrews from your barrel like that. Your piston's going to be inside of it like that. Handle on the back like so. And the piston assembly here. There's a check valve down in here, which you know we're going to unscrew and remove out of there like you do any type of Schrader valve. And resting on top of that is this, this is the old one. I don't know what you would call this, but this little piston end seal, we'll call it, goes right on top of that. And I think the problem with my unit is the check valve right here is bad. Your new piston seal goes on here. That's kind of this cup looking seal. And then the o-ring goes up here on the front part. Now, I found out that you do have to take the thing completely apart um, because if you leave this back piece on like that and try to put the piston back in this way, uh, it won't it, it won't go. You won't be able to get it past these threads without damaging your your piston seal. So you have to take the thing completely apart, stick your piston in in this direction. When I do it for real, I'll do it a little nicer and it'll slide on in but you can't get it to go backwards past the threads at either end of this uh, barrel so you can see mine is all nasty uh, inside like i said i had this thing from years and years and years uh, you know there's some rust on the spring i'll clean up um, what happened to mine is after so many years of being careful i finally managed to suck some brake fluid up in it and tear it all to pieces so you know now i'm going to fix that clean it all up put the rebuild kit in it and hopefully it will be as good as new so that's uh that's it uh, i'm going to clean it up with alcohol denatured alcohol uh, and i think it will go back together just fine so i uh, hope this helps you a little bit the video is nothing fancy apologize for that um, but I couldn't find else, anything else on the internet that uh, covered this. So, uh, you know, hope this gives you a hand if you get into trying to rebuild one of these things. All right, that's it. So long for now, and thanks.